Everybody at a striker, we're building the tuna on toast community. Hit that subscribe button. And all these episodes on the road in Vegas are all happening because of Velvet Hammer Music and Management Group. They manage AFI and Corn and System of a Down and Avenge Sevenfold, and they love tuna on toast. Now, here's another episode. This is Tuna on Toast. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Tuna on Toast. We are on the road in Vegas at the Win Blue Wire Studio. Sick New World Festival is tonight. Headlining is System of a Down. And look who's next to me, my man Shavo. My brother. Thank you for having me, man. Thank you so much. Day of show. You wander down here to Blue Wire Studio right in the walkway. Yeah. <laughs> I really, really appreciate this, man. Of course. I was kind of, you know, woke up today with like 30 texts like, we're coming, but we don't have passes. We have passes, but we don't have tickets. You know, like, oh, Jesus I'm like, Christ. why the day of the show? You know, like, why on the day are you doing this to me right now? So I had, I've been on this like constant um, text thing with my tour manager, trying to get people in and out. And can you change this name to that? Can you do this? To, I'm like, oh man. But you know, it's all settled. I'm done. A little bit of nervous energy because I just want to focus. You know, I want to do this with you. Yeah. Because I was excited to talk to you. This is about my good friends right here forever. I don't even know how long I've known you, but 20, 20 some, years, 23 years, probably amazing. since 2000, we've known each other. Older than a lot of the kids that are going to the show tonight. Absolutely. So, yes. So we've lived many moments together. Um, mostly good. Well, yeah, mostly good. <laughs> We've had some serious talks in the yeah, middle bro. of the night before. Yes, sir. Shavo set me straight many times. Striker, you're going off the deep end. You oh, got to focus on this. Focus. Yeah. I remember this. <laughs> you remember that? Crazy. We sat on TVs together. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Um, oh, my we, goodness. Not this big thing. But uh, so anyways, yeah, so I'm really looking forward, man. We, I have a question yes. about when people reach out and want something from you. Shavo is such a generous guy and everybody knows that. And he wants everybody to be happy. Yeah, of course. But when you're 25 years into a career and these people are still doing that, you still feel like you got to like, they're reaching out day of the show. Can't you yeah. say, guys, just one text. It's too late. Sorry. No, because I feel like these people are still my people and mm. it could be 25 years from now and I'll still be helping out. You know what I mean? If I could. If I can't, then they should understand. But I know that I can. I got the kids running around. See, it's a, it's a different time for us. We have kids now, like coming to the show, so I'm really excited. It's, it's kind of nerve wracking to you know, see the little kids while I'm playing. You know, it's different. It's have not... they been to any of your shows before? Well, my sons have a few of them. The last year's Bank of California show, right? And stuff oh like yeah. That. And my daughter came to that one, but this is her second time. But she kind of doesn't remember she was like three and a half so she's five now she's gonna remember this one she's gonna really see yeah. you in action tonight and she was like daddy's gonna be shaking his butt <laughs> i'm like <laughs> laughing my balls off you know so, so I'm looking forward shava we're in vegas obviously yes. are you going to wear a raiders jersey good question i was and i pulled it out of the storage okay <laughs> and it was I was swimming in it because I've lost a lot of weight since I was wearing those triple X things. Right. You know? So now I'm like a medium. <laughs> so I put it on and it was like, it didn't, it didn't feel right at all. Yeah. And I pulled an older one out when I was a little thinner, but no dude, like, you know, I, I went on a health trip and I'm like, you know, I'm a different, I, I eat differently. I, I exercise a lot. So, um, those did, they just don't, it didn't look right on me. It just didn't. And if you so, don't feel like you're looking good and something is way too big on you, as bad as you want to wear that particular article yeah, of clothing, you got to just throw in the towel and be like, it was, I can't do it. It was like Charlie Brown. Like, it was just like, <laughs> it was not working at all. It was like this, no joke, like talking heads. Oh, yes. You know, yes. Like, you may ask yourself. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's the song, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's what it was. So, I won't be wearing it, even okay. though Raiders, Vegas, right? Uh, but there might be something LAFC in there, you know? My you are new, a big it's my new team right here. Fan. Yeah, last two and a half years. Yeah, you new enjoy team. going to those games and getting all that. There's so much camaraderie Bro. there for the team. But when you're there, I can see it as well with the people that go to those games. I love it. It's just you know I've been to Laker games. I've been to uh, Kings games, Dodger games, Dodger games. There's nothing that I felt that I feel at these games. I mean, not to say anything negative about those uh, those uh, teams. I love them. I still love the Lakers. Like they won. Yes, yeah, awesome. Go Lakers. Uh, but it's just different, man. The fans are a little more hardcore and not afraid to show it. There's no, like, we're too cool to cheer. We're too cool to show that we're really into this team. Everyone's just buck wild like Europe. It's like that. But the the BMO uh, stadium, but used to be called Bank of California. Where right, you yeah, play, yeah, yeah. That stadium explodes. 
even on like the cheap games, like the regular season games that no one really cares about, doesn't really hurt or make a team, you know, and the, the three, two, five, two, that's like the fan club that comes to the side there. They're all there. There's like no seats there. There's like roller coaster handling. <laughs> I'm not joking. Bro. The place explodes and those guys just make it happen. And anyone of you should come with me one day. I would love to. I'll take to. you to any, I would any love game to. you know you're free at, yeah. that you're free that night. I got you. Thank you, Shane. And of course, bro, we got like floor seats and fields. It'll be so fun. God, I would love yeah, to. Yeah, bro. Yeah. So it's just really fun, man. And it's, you know, it's like, you know, we got a lot going on in our lives. We got the kids, this, that. But like, I always make time. If I'm in town, I'm, sh I'm at the game. I, it's just a necessary thing. There's one Wednesday, I leave town on Thursday morning with my wife and on Wednesday, there's a game I'm gonna try to go. <laughs> She's That's gonna be like, cool. we're leaving tomorrow. I'm like, it doesn't matter. What about leading up to this show? Not the band preparation, but what is your preparation? Let's just go like the last seven days. Like, what do you need to do mentally and physically? And do you practice on your own? How does it work? Well, about three weeks ago, I started getting a little nervous like you should get your bass out like <laughs> tuned to this tuning and stuff <laughs> right. you know because we have like we've tuned the first three records to c and then the mesmerized hypnotizes in c sharp but when we play on stage we play everything on c right so even practicing i gotta switch guitars so i could remember it's just it's not that i don't remember it's just it's muscle memory that kind of goes away a little bit because right. it's it's so few and far when we play you know it's been a year and a half and we've added some oldies to, to the set that we haven't played for like 10 years, maybe longer. Oh boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're playing a <laughs> lot exciting. of songs, by the way. Yeah, we're- Can you real... reveal how many songs you're gonna play? To... I mean, it's people, people are gonna see this afterwards. Yeah, oh yeah, 30. 30 like, songs. There's 30 tracks on there. Some are wow. renditions. Yeah, some are renditions, but you know what I mean? It's like moments of songs. Yes. We go, and, you know how we do it, bro. We'll like start something, end with something else. So we're doing that. But my thing is, is like, I get, I get the guitars. I practice with the guitar and then I move to the bass. Um, I don't know why, but that's just been the thing always. I've always done that. So um, I'll pull them out and I'll play it on my phone and I'll play it to it. And what I can't remember, I'll I'll hear it and I'll just find that note. And then all of a sudden the riff comes to me. You just, just when know you it. You, yeah, just, when you, it just you see happens. your hands and then you don't have to look it anymore. It just happens. Wow. But in your head before you do it, it's nerve wracking. You're like, Fuck, I don't want to forget. I, I don't want to like, this might be tough. It, you know, it's been a long time. Is, is my memory all there? But then it all yeah. just comes back like it's nothing. And then, so I try to do that homework before rehearsal. So when I show up to rehearsal, it's not like, hey, Darren, how do you do that? You know, right? I didn't want any of that. Did you guys rehearse for this show in LA or did you get a spot here in no, Vegas? No, we were in LA all week. We're two weeks. We pr played like four, five, six times, something like that. Um, four, I think. What is the toughest song? What was it for you to remember where even though you had the muscle memory on 99% of them, there was one system song you're like, what the heck is going on right now? There was a moment in soil. Oops, <laughs> I let it out. Oh, but this is after, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a moment in soil that I was playing wrong. And then there was a moment in forest that I was, oh. I was just playing the like one octave. It's just an octave thing, you know? But I like to hit it right, you know, because it is like all about the dynamics of how we sound on. There's only one guitar and one bass. You got to be like doing your part right or else it sounds empty. There's not like full, there's no track we play to. There's no keyboards. There's, I mean, there are here and there when Serge plays, but lately it's been broken down punk rock. You know, we're just like nice. doing it. So you need to, there's no double guitars, you know. Right. I, I am that thing. I am the double guitars. I am the rhythm, you know. Wow. So, um, yeah, you just, I mean, I believe in like being spot on, man, and like doing what you need to do. And we're tight now. Like, I swear, after four days, we sound like we haven't stopped. Like, it's just, we've been on tour for nine months. That's what it feels like. Right? So is that a mind F then? Because oh, yeah. you know how good you sound and that it's one show only in this many years. And then, I, you know, there's a couple coming up, but just, is you it, know are, how you I feel. are you itching? Are you, yes. I am, I would play 10 months out of the year if I could every day. I, I like live up there, you know? But it takes four to tango. Right. You know what I'm saying? It four to and, tango. And uh, it is what it is. And we're going through a little hump. It is, it's cool. It is what it is. Like, I can't complain because I'm blessed to be where I'm at and doing what I do. You know, um, I mean? and I love the guys. So, yes. you know, to each his own and everyone's in a different place in their life. And Are you able to step back and know how appreciated you are as a musician and a band for all the, for the songs that you guys have created? And when you do do a show, it gets our energy from a 2.5 to a 10.0. It's crazy and that's we're blessed bro i'm grateful and blessed uh you don't even know i i was just thinking the other day i was like this is like an anomaly like we don't the less we do the more mm. it, there's you know what i mean and I, I would like to do more of course but like i said i'm grateful for what we are doing and who we are and where we've come and i'm grateful for our fans and i love them all 
and I can't wait to like stare each one in the eyes because oh. when I play, I like to give that. That's a little story I could tell you. So the reason why I'm so, I communicate so well with the crowd. When I was a kid, one of my first concerts was Kiss and Anthrax. It's up to Scotty. Um, we, I was in like the ninth row or something. I don't know how we got those tickets, but we got them. I was 13 years old and I was watching the stage and I thought Gene Simmons looked at me oh. and that was it. But of course he looked at my section. He didn't really yeah. look at me, but I'm, what, how old am I now? I'm pushing 50. I'm still telling you that story. So that means something to me. So if I can give that experience to as many kids as possible or people possible, I'm going to, because that's a cool feeling. And I do catch their eyes and I look at them and I'll make a face, they'll make a face back and we know we got each other and I'll move to the next person. Oh. You know what's trippy is like, I'll, I'll go through the crowd and then the ones I went and got that connection with, any time I look, they're looking. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you know, it's like, let's do it again. Like, it's so cool. Yeah, it's just, just, just like, that's another blessed thing about this job, about this career, about what we do is, connecting with other humans in the best way where it's like non-negative it's only positive there's that's rare in today's right. world you know there's a lot of separation that we're seeing in, in every way not just politically you know and everyone's like no my way is the right way and no, this when you're up there doing that there is no right way wrong way there's just the way and that's it and i that's why i would love to be up there seven months out of the year <laughs> i'll I, do that I you know I if i get the opportunity which leads to me doing this other record that i'm gonna take on tour and stuff tell you know? me the other record well, is what is this is it something new that we don't know about at all at this yeah. point? yeah uh, i mean i did the north kingsley that record yes. is done I, I will be dropping that but i started this heavy record and um i've already said a lot about it but i'm not gonna say too much more it's it's rock it's heavy metal like it's like system doing metal core vibe it's just i love the whole drum and you know, like, like the heavy bit, drums and as long as i've known you even when system was at full throttle a plus crazy schedule you were still like in the downtime thinking of what else can i create here yeah and so you must really your brain must be going at all times these days i love it it's just uh, if i don't create i kind of get sad inside mm. like, you know that's kind of a way i get out i become who i am you know um i don't know i've always been like that ever since i was a kid is there a name of the project by the way no it's just i'm thinking just called shavo i don't know okay good i like that i've name. branded everything else but i haven't branded shavo yet I want to get to some of the other <laughs> things you've branded. Rick Rubin's been doing quite a few interviews over the last seven months. Yeah. And boy, oh boy, he says so many great things about you. He's talking about you. I want to go to you, Shavo. When you make the first record with Rick, what did he bring to the table? What surprised you? And just what do you remember about that first experience with him? First, I was at all. You know, I'll tell you, you know, prior to that, I'll tell you a little quick blurb. Um, when, when System and I, got together we're rehearsing and we uh, darren brought in the first song that song never made it to a record but once we were done with it i whispered in his ear i said you know who would get this rick rubin would get this and this is 94 95 and he's like get out of here bro you know like just you know you're thinking too crazy i'm like just it's different bro you know this is not like anything i've ever heard and it's the great style that we're like starting and that was it and then in 97, Rick came to the show and took us, man. Like that was, he, won, he, he, he saw one show and he was like, I want you. Prior to that, there were like all these labels coming, but not really dropping a contract, not really giving us an offer, just coming and going. Cause it was like, no one knew what to do with us. They were just like, how do we market this band? They don't sound like too many people, you know? Right. And Rick knew. How did Rick end up at that first show? Was that a Roxy show, Whiskey, It was Troubadour? at the Viper Room. Oh, it was and, at the um, Viper Room. Yeah, Guy okay. Siri, I think, yes? from uh, Maverick brought him. And then did you talk to him that night? That night he said, what do we do to make this happen? <laughs> Just like that. Every other brand, like every other label was like, oh, we'll have something, you know. But they kept coming and not offering. Right after he said that, everyone started throwing offers in. Yeah, wow. Crazy. And did you have someone on your side kind of helping you out with like, this is the thing maybe you should sign or, sh or well, you, you should not sign? Yeah, at that point, we had put the team together. You know, oh, in, you the, did? in the okay. first few years, it was just me you know, doing everything, <laughs> managing and stuff. Right. You know, we, we all you had were managing. Let's yeah. be, in case you don't know, or maybe Shavo was managing the <laughs> band while in the band. Yeah, yeah. And like, you know, we it's a team, you know, like, one wrote majority of the music, the other one wrote the vocals, the other one, you know, we all do what we're good at and that's what makes a good team. You know, you don't do the same things. Like if there was like four quarterbacks and no wide receiver, you wouldn't get a good team, right? 
you just have four good quarterbacks. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. You know, but not a winning team. So the winning team has to all have certain things that the other one doesn't and put it together and you win, bro. That's a collaborator. And that's something Rick just said in one of his podcasts. Anyways, so the when when we started recording, uh, or he, he actually came to pre-production and he wanted to hear the songs and how they went. And it's his ear, bro. He's not like good at playing anything. He's not like the guy that works the board. He's just, his advice to you is really genuine, period. His taste is really genuine and really good. It seems like what he likes, the masses like. You know, it's just this thing. That's his gift. And he knows how to articulate it in words and tell you and make you understand it and do it. So that's what he does. And for all those bands that talk sh have talked shit about him, oh, he doesn't do that. That's because they needed help in writing music. This guy doesn't help you write music. He just gives you his advice on the music you wrote. He has exquisite you know taste, at least mm -hmm. in my mind. And everybody yeah. has different tastes. There's A plus level musicians who they don't really, they're not my fancy, but he has a certain taste, a certain sound that he likes. And he's like, maybe try it this way. Yeah. Here's what I feel. And then you guys are the ones that have to go for it. He's not turning up this or turning no. down this or saying, write this lyric or Never. anything. But he'll help you with stuff if you need help, you know? Um, like he'll say, do that chorus twice, try that, you know? Or uh, this one is too long, make it shorter. You know, or that lyric might not make sense there in uh, in the right way. I, I, I don't know, I'm not being specific, but I'm just saying like, those are the types of little things he says and does. And it makes a world of a difference for a band that, you know, al already kind of does what they do. They just need that fifth ear to like, give them the advice that's not coming from inside the unit. Cause that's also rough, you know? Right. Yeah. So it's great, man. That's, that's the, I've learned a lot from him. Just like by watching and being in the studio, watching him work for five records, I feel like I can produce myself. Something wow. just happened, you know, like I've worked on bands here and there, I've not taking too much credit, but I've, I do it just to help, you know, because I do, it has come to me, like the, the, the music I write, I, I sometimes accidentally catch myself. What would Rick say on this part? What would he, would he make it twice or four times? You know what I mean? Like, yes. it just happens like automatically. It's not um, anything I'm controlling or trying to do. It's just cause it's, that's what I know, you know? The dudes from Rage Against the Machine just got, uh, the ceremony hasn't happened, but they're going into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I heard, congratulations, dudes. That's amazing. So why can't System get on the ballot one day and do you think about that stuff at all? Or is that yeah. so far back in your mind and never, you, it, no. I mean, no, I never thought of that, but hey, it's not that we can't. One, one day we might, you know, but it's not something that's a, like it doesn't drive me. You know? Right. It's the Hall of Fame. It is what it is. There's people that don't belong, then there's people that belong that are not there. So it ain't all fair. We'll see. Big well, props, though. You, know, you guys would props. be on first ballot for me. Thank you. And you I think should you join their uh, team. I know. <laughs> someone bring someone bring me a <laughs> couple more things, and we'll get you out of here, and you can go rest and get ready for tonight. Yes, sir. Uh, 22 Red, mm. which is your brand. Can you Correct. just tell everyone that doesn't know too much about it? Give me the big Give me the big bullet points on it, please. Well, it started as a lifestyle brand about five years ago with like hoodies and t-shirts and merch and stuff. And uh, when my third partner, that I started with my best friend, one of my best friends in the world that I've had for like, since I was five years old. Um, and then when the third partner, Sean came through, he grew cannabis. And I, you know, since cannabis was legalized, everyone wanted me to join the game. And I was just like, you know what? I'm, I'm more of a taster. I'm not the business guy that would do it, you know? And I didn't know who was going to grow. I, I didn't want to represent it. You know, you don't know. It's not like you make something and then there it is. It's always the same. It's a yeah. growing thing. It's a right. flower. It's alive. So it needs to be done right and well. And if someone's going to, I don't believe in like celebrity brands where they stamp their name on it and then they put whatever it is in the bag and they sell it because it's, and then if you're a fan of that artist, then you go buy that. No, I'd rather you be a fan of my product. So once this guy came in and I saw what he grew, I was like, okay, man, I, I could rep this as long as it's this. So make a long story short, it's it's a lifestyle slash cannabis brand. We started about four and a half years ago in California in three dispensaries. Now, years later, we're in Nevada, Arizona, and California nice, in all, all dispensaries. Um, we're relaunching in Las Vegas with brand new flavors and genetics that we created uh, with a team called Redwood starting in the summer. And then we're relaunching in California as well. We're only in Stizzy shops right now doing specific drops of like really cool flower and merch and but we're gonna go buck wild in arizona we're going buck wild um we have new products coming out we got pre-rolls we got rosin pens new merch 
Good for you, Shavo. All sorts Good of stuff, for you, know? you man. Oh, yeah. you know? God, that's exciting. Keeping busy. Yeah. Uh, last, there's so many. This is a mini tuna on toast episode. <laughs> if this is your first time watching, we're on the road. We're in Vegas. Sick New World. Uh, the doors are already open at Sick New World today. Yeah. Was there in 95 or 96 a band meeting where everyone said, these are our goals? Or like, what was, yeah. the, what was the goal of the band? Just to make music. Just to make music and, and to continue play. to play like Roxy, Troubadour, yeah. well, Viper we, Room. At some point when the fans started coming over and over and over, we knew there was something special. But it was just like, keep your focus on the music and doing it right and doing it for the right reasons and causes and yes. getting the message out as well with it and being interesting and keep it fresh. And that's what it was and we did, you know. Which bands, who were some bands that were bigger than you at the time that, hmm. that you went out on the road with early on? Corn, oh. <laughs> uh, Deftones, all the, like, I went and watched them as we practiced and wrote our first few songs. I would watch, I went to a Deftones corn show at the Whiskey and was in the pit. You know what I'm saying? When we were called Soil, I had a Soil hat on yeah. in the pit. Uh, so, I mean, Rage and all those guys, man, all the yeah. bands, like, uh, you know, even Cold Chamber and oh, wow. uh, all the bands on Sick New World, man, I respect them and love them. And I'm so like honored to be the headliner, but I think that they're all amazing and I'm, so happy that we could put something on like this, you know, and have that vibe of that era mashing with some really cool new bands like Horror and Turnstile. And I love those bands. Bro. Yeah, Turnstile. So, cool like, there's so a few much. other ones. And then we got Death Grips back. And, like I said, Cold Chamber, I love those guys. They're back. They're going to go on a mini tour. And there's a bunch of bands I'm not mentioning. Um, I mean, you got bands like Hoobastank to Papa Roach. Yeah, dude, Papa Roach, Hoobastank, Origin, yeah. Cold. I mean, so many bands from our era. Um, yeah. Incubus, let's go through the list, please. So I don't. So they're <laughs> no, not you're like, doing he, good. You're doing, like Mr. Mr. Bungle, bro. Right, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Right. Bungle that we toured with. We toured. We did the, we did the Snowcore tour, and it was Mr. Bungle, Incubus, and us. I remember. So that. it's like kind of a mini reunion, <laughs> um, dude. Like I can't think of everyone. There's so many. There's Ministry, KMFDM, Soulfly, uh, Sisters of Mercy, Cradle of Filth. Uh, some of, of that's right. We're good. There's we're, just we're so wrap many it. bands we're, we're that I'm a right. fan Give of. Give me right there. Put it there. Uh, yes, sir. My man. This was a mini tuna on toast. We're 25 minutes in. I told you it'd only be 18 to 20. Shavo, thank you for the friendship. Oh man. Thank you for thank the you. music. Thank you for the memories. We love you. I love we you, love. Bro. We love thank you individually. You. We love the band. We love everything you do. Thank you, brother. Thank okay. you. We love you too, and thank you for having me. I love this. You got it. So oh, yeah. what we're gonna do after this? I'm gonna go drink 48 ounces of water, get rested up, and go see System of a Down tonight. Thank you guys so much for watching. For Shavo, I am Striker. That's been another episode of Two Not Toast. Happy snuggles. Bye bye. Bye bye. That was rad. Hope you enjoyed. Now hit that subscribe button. And for more Tuna on Toast, listen wherever you get your podcasts.